Joining us now is OGOP with stories trending around the world. Hello, G. Thank Good God morning. it's Friday. TGIF. Good, Good morning, morning Dr. Abati. You look dapper. <laughs> yeah, Good morning, TGIF. Tundun. How are you? Great, thank you. We had fun yesterday. We really did. It was a blast. <laughs> Happy birthday again. Thank you. I'll say it. Okay, well, today's the end week. of the week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Happy birthday all week. <laughs> Good morning, Rafai. It's not only me, OG, but yesterday was like my Friday. Uh, yeah, I know, yes, right? Was. Yeah. yeah. It was a yes, Friday. It was, it was like my Friday, yeah. honestly. Yeah. We, we had, had a all the trappings of Friday. Great people, great food, you know, great chat. Lovely. Right. And thank you guys so much for making it. Right. Well, Tundu, I thank hope you, you, you can for have, making my birthday special. Have your birthday every day so know, that we can right? have, we can have an opportunity Happy to birthday celebrate. to you. <laughs> well, all right. Good morning to you, viewers. Here are some of the highlights of what's trending across the globe. First, in the UK, a Nigerian, Joel Adams, has been commissioned into the British Royal Air Force as a flying officer. In Nigeria, the Lagos State Police Command has warned against any planned protest at the Lekki toll gate this weekend. In Kaduna, an engineer, Yahaya Ahmed, built a house using 14,800 sand-filled plastic bottles as bricks. Well, in Oshun State, a 101-year-old woman has survived COVID-19 after spending 12 days at a hospital. And finally, in Japan, a musical couple traveling from Tokyo to Sendai in an empty bullet train decided to fill the void by playing a violin. How beautiful. Well, let's begin in Nigeria, where the Lagos State Police Commissioner has warned that security forces will dislodge any planned protests in the state. While briefing journalists on the Occupy Lekki Tollgate protest scheduled for this Saturday, the commissioner said the command had gathered that some hidden agents of destruction were aiming to carry out violence in the state. He added that no protest will be permitted and that security of lives and property of the government and the good people of Lagos is paramount and non-negotiable. You know, we're still going to be talking about this Occupy Lekki toll gate um, event, protest that will happen on Saturday and the Defend Lagos um, group who will obviously, I think, will be meeting on Saturday. I just don't know how uh, the security forces plan to you know, stop this protest. As we all know, the right to protest is our constitutional right. I believe also the Minister for Information, Lai Mohammed, had also said that he had gotten information that Nigerians and people outside Nigeria have you know, planned for some sort of violence to happen on Saturday. It's really unfortunate that a fundamental human right is now being conflated with violence as a result of what happened mm -hmm. and the way the NSAS protest, the legitimate protest, was hijacked by criminals. Yes. And now it's now being smeared in this way. It's really quite galling. Having said that, however, I still have to go back to the point that I feel that the judicial panel erred. They were a bit too hasty in talking about reopening the Lekki toll gate. There are victims who demand respect and their relatives who demand closure, justice. It, it, it would have been so much tidier to conclude before making any announcements. I think it's the timing that has caused this. Now we have this warning from the government, from the security agencies. It's completely unequivocal. Anybody who attempts to protest now will be dealt with like a criminal, whereas protesting is not a criminal activity in any democracy in the world. It's really, it's, it's such a step backwards as far as I'm concerned in our democratic process. It's mm -hmm. unfortunate. However, I'm with um, the, well, I think he's the counsel in support of the victims, Ebon Adegorua. Ebon Adegorua, yes, he spoke against the actions of the judicial panel, but at the same time is urging protesters to shelve their protests for now for the sake of peace. Yes, I mean, I think that that's very uh, important to do at this point because in well, any case, if violence erupts, it's just going to go the same way as the protests. We NSAS need to take protests. a short break. Yes, we'll do that. So we'll take a short break. When we return, what's trending with OGOP will continue.
Welcome back to the morning show here on the Arise News Channel. Still with us is Oji Ope, who has been reviewing stories trending around the world. Well, Oji, uh, before we went on that break, we were talking about the proposed, or if you like, the planned uh, protests at the Lekito Gate uh, tomorrow. Uh, on one hand, we have the uh, hashtag Defend Lagos. On the other hand, we have hashtag Occupy uh, Lekito, Lekito Gate. Gate. Yes. Both reactions, or if you like, fallouts uh, from the decision of the uh, Okuobi panel, Judicial Panel of Inquiry, to allow the Lekki Concession Company, the LCC, hmm. uh, to reopen the toll gate after that toll gate had been shut down since October 2020. Now, I had Tundun saying, well, she doesn't agree with uh, the decision of the uh, Okuobi panel, which voted five to four, or which took the decision uh, five to four. However, that panel has said, and also uh, the Commissioner for Information of Lagos, Bigger Motor Show, who was here, had said that, look, what they have done is to give the LCC uh, the opportunity to rebuild the place and also uh, sort out insurance issues. And all of that could take the next four months. While the panel is still sitting and considering issues, you know, before it takes final decision. So it's not as if uh, next week, two weeks' time, you will suddenly see the return of uh, tolling at that uh, lucky toll gate. Well, whether we are convinced uh, about that or not is another question entirely. But the immediate issue is a plan to have uh, protests and counter protest at that toll gate tomorrow. And I would like to uh, you know, review the development so far with regard to some of the statements that have been made. The first statement was by the uh, Lagos State Commissioner of Police, Akimo Dumusu, who says that they are convinced from the intelligence gathered that some agents of destruction want to return to that lucky toll gate to ensure the breakdown of law and order in Lagos, and that the police command in Lagos is not going to fold its arms, that the police command in Lagos will not allow any protest yes. at that lucky toll gate uh, tomorrow, and that his men have been deployed, the men in that area have been deployed to make sure it does not happen, and that whoever wants to come out should know that uh, there is COVID-19, and that if you go there and you violate uh, COVID-19, his men will not hes hesitate to enforce the law. Okay, that's what he has said. The only problem I have with it is that the Commissioner of Police in Lagos, sounding also like the Minister of Information, is saying that there, can, there will be no protest. No, the police is not in a position to say so. Even the federal government of Nigeria is not in a position to say so. Because protest is a fundamental yes. human right. And that has been proven in case law and in all kinds of precedents. So if people want to protest, they can protest. The only problem is that they have to do so peacefully. And if they need police protection, police should also exactly. protect police them. Exactly, police protection. That's what they the should be talking about. The other statement that came yesterday was a press statement by the Attorney General of Lagos State and Commissioner for Justice, uh, Unibanjo SCN. Now, what the uh, Attorney General was saying I think it's a statement that should be made available to the Commissioner of Police of Lagos because the uh, uh, Attorney General makes it clear that, look, Section 39 and Section 40 of the 1999 Constitution recognizes the right to protest peacefully and to uh, uh, have access to free assembly. Now, what the uh, Constitution does not say is that you can stop, you, you, you are allowed to stop Ojineka okay, uh, from going about a normal business because you want to express yourself under the Constitution, or to shut down roads and violate our own fundamental rights. The Attorney General made that clear, that if that were to happen, then the state will have no option but to make sure that Ojine Kaoko's rights are defended, even while the people who are protesting can have their say. Now, in paragraph 7 of uh, Unik Banjo's uh, statement, is particularly directed to the police, the Commissioner of Police. And he says that the Commissioner of the Police in Lagos State, why they have the right to uh, uh, enforce the law, they should also be sure that they respect the rights of the people Correct. and that they do their job in a professional manner. So I think that uh, paragraph 7, somebody should cut it out and send it to the Commissioner of Police of, uh, of uh, Lagos State. Now, the third uh, uh, statement that came out yesterday was the statement by the uh, Lekki Residents Association, signed by the chairman of uh, Lekki Residence Association. He, he says that the main gate to the uh, Lekki estate, phase one, will be shut down by 5 a.m. 
and that nobody will be allowed to egress in or egress out from that main gate. People should go and take alternative uh, routes. There's one more statement from the PDP, uh, Doherty. All these are stakeholders, I guess. Uh, the chairman of the Lagos branch of the PDP, saying that the main issue has not been addressed by the Lagos state government or even by the panel. That the people of Lagos do not want the tolling of that gate. I guess that is where the problem is. Because you know that when that toll gate was to be handed over to the LCC, there were people who were saying, no, we cannot pay any tolls. We live in the lucky axis. We are already paying taxes. We are already making our contribution. Why do we want to put an extra burden on us? And cause traffic. Second, he's saying that they want to know who the contractor is, who are the managers of that lucky toll gate. Because you recall, he pointed out that they need to be sure, the people of Lagos need to be sure, that the revenue from that toll gate is not going into the pockets of one privileged individual in, in, in Lagos, and that they want to know the status of the contracts. So these are some of the issues. All of these stakeholders have raised their own issues, but our expectation is that nobody will be shot. Nobody will, you go and carry live bullets and uh, will come and have a crisis again. Since uh, the police know that hoodlums may hijack whatever will happen tomorrow, then they have to take every step to protect the people of Lagos State and to protect that facility. All right. That's my take. Very good. Rufai, before I come to you, mm. we'll take another story. Okay. Reactions have been trailing the invitation of the Central Bank Governor, Godwin Emefele, by the Nigerian Senate over the restriction of cryptocurrency. The Senate on Thursday invited the CBN governor and the Director General of Security and Exchange Commission to brief it on the opportunities and threats of cryptocurrency on the nation's economy and security. The decision, which has caused outrage across the country for many Nigerians, mostly young people, who have invested in the digital currency, was triggered by the Apex Bank's claim that the currency is used for money laundering and terrorism. Many have welcomed the Senate's invitation. Let's take a quick tweet from Peter, who wrote, Nice move by the Senate for the first time, for a reasonable cause. Hope it yields positivity, because we can't be retrogressing in this country after being backward for years. Rufai, your take on this story. Yeah, right move by the Senate. But for me... <laughs> <laughs> I, I laugh a lot because the people that are calling somebody to come and brief them on crypto, what do they even know about cryptocurrency themselves in the first place? I mean, I heard the arguments recently. We saw the VT of the arguments now about some senators, you know, saying all sorts about cryptocurrency. So what do they even know about cryptocurrency themselves in the first place? I know we have a, an arm in the Senate that deals with banking and finance and financial regulations and the like. What do they know about cryptocurrency in the first place? I think we should get that education before we even call the CBN government. Because what the CBN government will come and say would be probably things he had said before about cryptocurrency. We should get the main stakeholders in the room. And I know the Senate will do that. I trust the Senate to do that. Get the main stakeholders in the room to still come around and talk about cryptocurrency and make them understand what it's all about and the emerging change in the market in the world. It has come to stay. It is creating employment for a lot of people. They're going to say terrorists are going to use it. Terrorists to deal in the Naira and dollars. So currency is not the habitat of people doing evil. People have an evil mind to do evil. They'll use any form of currency to do evil anywhere in the world. Those are the arguments here. So please, in calling the CBN governor to talk about his own side, call stakeholders too, to talk about the side. And let the stakeholders to tell you the technology that we put in place to regulate this, because you can trace this transaction. That's why it's called blockchain technology. My first point. My second point on the toll gate. Please, I beg you. You see, in an ideal scene, yes, we can go out and exercise our right and protest. I've protested in many parts of the world, but I've not tried it in Nigeria because I'm too afraid for my life. I've protested in England. What did you do? You go there, you book a space with the local council. They even give you a time to protest, 12 to 1. After protesting, you go back home, another group comes to protest. But I've not tried it here because I don't know what will happen to my life. I beg you, there is no way 
But, okay, I, All right, we're break. fine. We'll, we'll have to go on a, on a short break. And when we return, what's trending on the morning show will continue. Stay with us. Welcome back to the morning show here on the Arise News Channel. Still with us is OGOP with stories trending around the world. Well, before we went on that break, we were talking about the invitation that has been extended by the uh, Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to the uh, CBN governor mm -hmm. and the uh, DG of the Securities and Exchange Commission to come and brief a, a joint committee of the Senate uh, on the uh, decision of the CBN to ban financial institutions from continuing to allow people to trade in cryptocurrencies through their platform. Now, one of the persons who is uh, pushing that uh, motion uh, is uh, Tokumba Biro. Tokumba Biro has spent his entire year in the finance sector. So I do not really think that knowledge will be the problem of a body like the, the Senate. If there are persons among them who do not understand what cryptocurrency is all about. Uh, we urge them to seek counseling, to seek, not counseling, to seek support. Uh, people will give them information, they will educate them. You, you get what I'm saying? Because the, the committees, we have capital market committee, we have the uh, com, uh, finance committee. In all of these committees, you have people who have the basic knowledge. What I think is important is the fact that you have the Senate taking an interest in this matter because it's something that has generated a lot of concern among young Nigerians, particularly uh, Nigerians in the fintech sector. And as our representatives, uh, they, sh they can show interest. And so it is good that uh, MFLA has been invited. Lamido uh, Yuguda, who is in charge of SEC, has been invited. And I, I find interesting two things. The first is the fact that the SEC DG, you know, when uh, Rutu Sudiri first brought this topic, we had expressed concern about lack of synergy. But the SEC DG, Dr. Yuguda, has now gone public after this invitation to say that, in fact, there is no conflict between the position of the CBN and the position of the Securities and Exchange Commission. When they get to that joint committee in the Senate, they can offer that explanation. The other thing, of course, is that does the Senate have any powers, one way or the other, uh, to change anything? I very much doubt so. Uh, but the fact that they have shown interest in the matter uh, in itself is good. But if you look at the tone of the contributions, you will see that what we have is a, is a pro-crypto uh, Nigerian Senate, because many of them, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they have also invested in cryptos and they are trying to protect uh, their own interests. Well, when they engage the DG, uh, SEC, and the CBN governor, one of the things they should talk about is about the impact on the average banker. Because we have seen reports of persons saying that it's the BVN that the banks are now using to shut down any account that has been used to trade in uh, crypto. So if, if you use your account with GT Bank to trade, then it means all your bank accounts can be shut down. Would that be fair? So they should address that. All right.